Hey guys, and welcome to Banana News. It's Banana. I'm Kevin, and and this is my co-fish, Banana. You know what? I've never seen soda and balloons used in such a way before, but it was so cool. I feel like, though, I need to say, please don't try that at home. <laughs> oh, hey, what do you think would happen if I took a clay pot and a bowling ball, and I, I don't know, just maybe use this bowling ball to apply pressure to this pot. What do you think would happen? Crash. It would be crash. Crash, 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 crash. Uh-oh. Uh, what, what, what's going on? Can you guys still see me? Are, are we back on now? Okay. Man, those uh, chin face people thingies, they're, they always try to take my segments. Now, where was I? Oh, right. So what do you think would happen if we took the clay pot and the bowling ball and we just, uh, you know, applied some pressure to the pot? You know, maybe just a little bit pressure at first. Crack, 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 and then, Crack, 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 and then nothing. Like, what if it cracked, but that's where it stopped? What if it broke just a little, but it wasn't destroyed? Like, is that even possible? Oh, hey, Teach, what say you? That is a very good question. So, let's take a look at our memory verse for the answer, answer. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Second Corinthians four, seven through nine. Now, let's imagine that we are the clay pots. In life, we're gonna go through some really, really hard stuff. Maybe God is growing us in a new way that feels really uncomfortable. Maybe someone is being really mean to us and hurting our feelings. Maybe we've been sinning against God a lot and it's bringing some yucky consequences into our lives. Whew. All of those things can feel like heavy weights that put pressure on our lives. But here's the incredible news. When you make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, he will not let you be totally destroyed. Woohoo! I mean, come on, we're all going to feel pain in our lives. Maybe like a clay pot, we feel like we're just about to break. But with God's strength and with his mercy, we will never be destroyed. Woohoo! Really? With God's mercy, we will never be destroyed? Whoa. Oh, and, and we're learning that when we're under pressure, God is merciful. So, so mercy must have something to do with it. But what is mercy? And what does it mean that God is merciful? What should we do? What should we do? Oh, I know. Let's find out. Chocolate milk, no. There's nothing. Who ate my dino nuggets? Oh. Do we have anything to eat? This isn't fun. I'm so bored. Can you take this out of the 
court. Pass to 11. 11 passes back. Almost gets blocked. We close by his defender. This is it for the game. He shoots. Misses. There's time to left. Looks up again. Shoots for the win. Oh, no. James, what did you do? My vase. Your dad gave this to me for our anniversary. James. I'm so sorry. You told me not to dribble the ball in the house, but I just got so bored and it doesn't matter. He told me not to do it and I did it anyways and I ended up breaking the vase that had gotten you. I'm so sorry. I know how much you loved it. Well, I need you to clean this up. And then I need you to take your basketball outside and make sure it stays outside. And then once you come in to clean up, I want you to go get ready to get some ice cream. Ice cream? Mm -hmm. You want to go get ice cream? What about my punishment? Don't I get a punishment? I mean, I definitely don't want a punishment, but I mean, I deserve one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. But I'm going to show you mercy. Mercy is not getting the punishment that you deserve. God shows us mercy because he is merciful, and I'm gonna show you mercy. Well, I like mercy then. All right, clean it up. Mercy, not getting the punishment we deserve. Whoa, mercy sounds amazing. I can't wait to learn about how God gives us mercy when we're under pressure. So let's get to the truth. When we are under pressure, God is merciful. He's merciful, he's merciful. Our God is merciful. I'm making up a song cause it's really exciting and I don't really know how it's going. So just repeat after me. When we are under pressure, we are under pressure. God is merciful. Did you guys know that sometimes we're under pressure because of our own sin? It's true, but we'll get to that in just a second. So far, we've learned all sorts of things by reading through God's word, the Bible, together. And we've learned about how God blessed Abraham and created a nation of people that would get to be God's special chosen people. And they were a nation of people called Israel. God set them free from 400 years of slavery in Egypt and made a covenant or an everlasting promise with them. God said that as Israel followed his commands, he would make them into a holy nation and get to be his treasured possession. His treasured possession, God's treasured possession. How cool is that? That's awesome. All right, so then the Israelites wandered through the desert following God in search of the promised land, a land that would be their new home. But throughout that time, many of them, most of them, chose not to trust God, even though God showed them through his miracles how powerful and trustworthy he was over and over again. And because of that, almost an entire generation would not be allowed to enter the promised land, like all of them, except two men named Joshua and Caleb because they did trust God, so they got to enter the promised land. Woohoo! They're going to the promised land. In fact, after Moses died, Joshua even became the leader of Israel. And Joshua was an awesome leader. He was able to defeat a lot of the cities that wouldn't give the land to God and his people, like that victory at Jericho that we learned about last week. But there were still a lot of cities left, and after a lot of victories, Joshua died. But right before Joshua died, he delivered a warning to the people of Israel. So go ahead and take a look at this. So be very careful to follow everything Moses wrote in the book of instruction. Do not deviate from it, turning either to the right or to the left. Make sure you do not associate with the other people still remaining in the land. Do not even mention the names of their gods, much less swear by them or serve them or worship them. Rather, cling tightly to the Lord your God as you have done until now. Joshua 23, six through eight. 
So God warns Israel that if they're unfaithful to God by breaking his commands and they start doing evil things, then he's no longer going to help them to have victory over other cities. And this is where we begin with a book of the Bible called the book of Judges. Judges, you say? Hmm. All right. Order! I must have complete order in the court. Order, order, order with a side of fries, maybe? No? Wrong type of... All right, okay. Okay, so that's not quite the judge that we're talking about. We're talking about a judge in the Bible times. And a judge in the Bible times was a leader of Israel. And they were people who gave messages from God to the people and then would help rescue God's people when they were in trouble. Because, see, Israel, they didn't have a king yet. Bye-bye. Ah! Oops. Sorry. Kitty. Anyway, in the book of Judges, we learn about a pretty interesting cycle. Wait, do you guys know what a cycle is? Okay, so a cycle, not like a bicycle, but like a pattern that keeps happening over and 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 over again. And over again. You know what? I know a guy who can help us understand this a little bit better than I can help teach it to you. So, uh, Willie! Willie! Good day, mates! Today I'm gonna attempt to tame a wild beastie! What type of wild beastie, you may wonder? Well, she's got claws and teeth and lots and lots of fur! This here is a white Siberian husky. And they sure can be naughty pups. But take a look at those eyes. Eyes, aren't they gorgeous? Oh yeah, and those fluffy, fluffy ears. And this little pink nose. And oh, she's got some healthy teeth. Oh yeah. Oh, she's gorgeous. Look at her. All right, let's see if Walkabout Wilson has what it takes to tame this wild, crazy, off the leash beast. All right, the first step in taming a wild animal is to teach it to stay because you never know. All right, stay. Stay! Stay! Ah! Look out! She's a wild animal! Now, Wolfie, you just stay there and think about what you've done. Oh, all right, I forgive you. Come on. All right, come on, come on, come on. It is a good girl. Now that we've got this beast completely trained on the word stay, we're going to enjoy a picnic with this wild beast's favourite treat. But she's going to leave it alone. Don't try this at home. I'm not a professional. All right. <laughs> Delicious snack. Oh, love me some goldfish. You're going to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, what are you doing? Those are my goldfish. That's a bad job. Oh, cut, cut the camera, cut the camera. I ain't doing this to you, little fella, but it's the only way. Oh, all right. I forgive you. Come on, good girl. That's a good girl. You want a treat? Who wants a treat? Yeah, you want it. All right. Well, folks, I, Wilson Theodore Walkabout, have fully trained this beast. She will stay even when I throw her most favorite ball. All right, Wolfie, stay. No, Wolfie, come back, come back here, get back here. Wow, that dog didn't listen very well. But what cycle did you guys see? 
Well, Willie would teach the doggy something. See, she's sitting nicely, but then the doggy would disobey and run off. And then Willie would put her in a cage and discipline her. But then the doggy would be forgiven and freedom. She got to have some freedom. But then it kept happening all over again. Doggy would learn something, good dog. But then dog would be bad, bad dog. Dog got punished, sorry pup. And then Willie would forgive her, yay, freedom, freedom, freedom. And then all over again, good dog, bad dog, sad dog, happy dog, good dog, bad dog, sad dog, happy dog. And the Israelites had a similar cycle that we can see in the book of Judges. Once Joshua died, the Israelites forgot about the miraculous things that God had done for them. And they began to sin, like big time sin. They began to worship other gods and do really evil things. So guess what happened? Their enemies would come and overtake them. And it was a horrible pressure that the Israelites had to deal with, but it was because of their own choices to sin against God. And once the Israelites realized what they had done, they would repent or turn back to God, saying they're sorry and asking for God's forgiveness. And what do you think God would do from there? God showed them mercy. He would raise up a judge to help rescue the people from their enemies. And then the Israelites would spend some years in peace and rest. Oh, yay. But this cycle happened for around 300 years. The same cycle. In the book of Judges, they went through 12 different judges. So they would sin, be overtaken by their enemies, cry out to God and repent. Then God would send a judge to rescue them and they'd live in peace. And over and over and over again, that cycle would happen for around 300 years. But you know what I love? I love that God continued to show them mercy. Because if I was God, I'd be like, sorry guys, y'all keep messing up, bye. But God didn't do that. I mean, did the Israelites deserve to be punished for their disobedience? Of course they did, especially since they kept doing the same sins over and over again. But it reminds me of us. We sin too, and we sin a lot. And our sin doesn't just hurt us, but it hurts other people too. That's why God wants us to obey his commands. Because when we obey his commands, we're gonna end up loving him and others in a truly amazing way. But if we realize we're in sin, we can tell God we're sorry and we can ask for his forgiveness. He is always there waiting to pour out his love and mercy into our lives. I mean, God is so loving and kind that even when it's our fault, even when it's our fault, when we are under pressure, God is merciful. When we are under pressure, God is merciful. Whoa, so many cycles. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful that God is so merciful. You know, we, we, we may hear about the Israelites and, and think, seriously, come on guys, why you sin so much? But we're just like them. Whether you believe it or not, we sin every single day. But God is so merciful. Can we just stop and thank him for that? Oh yeah, we, we can. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, I wanna say I'm sorry for when I disobey you and, and ask that you forgive me. I thank you so much for your mercy. I, we all deserve the consequences of our bad choices. We deserve the punishment for our sin. But you're so good and you love us so much that you give us your mercy. And so thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well. That's it for this episode of Banana News. It's Banana. From 
from myself, Banana the Beta Fish, and everyone here at BR Kids. We want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what? Ah! Ah! Attack of the chickens! Chicken made!